Roman soldiers were not paid a salary until close to 350 years after the founding of the city. In this video, I tell you how the transition to putting soldiers under a payroll came about, the opposition that that policy faced, and how paying soldiers made their lives worse and not better. I welcome you to my YouTube channel where I explore ancient texts. The ancient texts I explore in this channel are those that have been around for thousands of years. At the moment, I'm going through from the founding of the city by Titus Livius or Livy. This is a collection of books that was written about 2000 years ago. It covers the history of Rome from the founding of the city by Romulus in the 750s BCE to the time when Augustus was emperor which was close to 0 AD. If you have not subscribed, subscribe so that you don't miss any of the videos I publish. In most societies today, being a soldier is a career like any other, with remuneration and other benefits. It was not always like this. Initially in the ancient Roman Republic, soldiers served as a responsibility they owed the commonwealth, just like taxes. Paid soldiers or mercenaries were looked down upon, especially because they owed allegiance only to the side that paid them, and not out of patriotism or pride. The soldiers were expected to get all the supplies they needed when going to war. That included their weapons, attires, and food supplies. The only way they benefited materially from wars was by sharing in the plunder from defeated enemies. Levy gives us a rare opportunity to witness a commonwealth transitioning from expecting the male subjects to rise and protect the state at their own expense to being paid from the treasury for their service. Levy illustrates this transition happening in ancient Rome in the year 406 BCE. This was after the capture of Anzur, a Volscian town, by the Roman soldiers, a battle win that was so much celebrated in Rome by both patricians and plebeians. This was especially because it was considered revenge for the attack on the Roman garrison at Verugo, where many Roman soldiers had been massacred. Livy writes, This was followed by a boon which the Senate at a most opportune moment conferred on the plebeians. Before the question was mooted either by the plebeians or their tribunes, the Senate decreed that the soldiery should receive pay from the public treasury. Previously, each man had served at his own expense. Initially, an overwhelming majority of Romans, both patricians and plebeians, thought putting soldiers on a payroll was the best idea. Indeed, Livy describes a lot of celebration in the city after the Senate passed this law. Livy writes, Nothing, it is recorded, was ever welcomed by the plebeians with such delight. They crowded round the Senate house, grasped the hands of the senators as they came out, acknowledged that they were rightly called fathers, and declared that after what they had done, no one would ever spare his person or his blood as long as any strength remained for so generous a country. Livy tells us that the only people who did not celebrate were the tribunes of the people. They were of the opinion that this new law was not going to benefit the commonwealth. They thought it sounded more attractive in theory than it will prove in actual practice. Livy writes, From what source, they asked, could the money be raised, except by imposing a tax on the people? Livy tells us that even after the rise in taxes, the public still remained enthusiastic about the idea of putting the soldiers on a payroll. Indeed, people paid the new tax without complaining or being pushed. Not long after the passage of the law, a new war against Vei was declared. Soon, another war with the Volscians started as well. Unlike before, these campaigns continued even at the advent of winter. For the first time, Roman soldiers were forced to fight in time of winter. They did not take a break, as it was usually the case, to visit their families and attend to their private affairs. The tribunes of the people started to highlight this change in the life of a soldier as akin to becoming a slave. Livy quotes the tribune saying the following, the Viantines are under their own roofs in a city protected by its magnificent walls and the natural strength of its position, while the Romans, amidst labor and toil, buried in frost and snow, were raving it patiently under their skin-covered tents and could not lay aside their arms even in the season of winter, when there is a respite from all wars, whether by land or sea. On their part, the patricians argued that the soldiers were paid for their time and therefore it was only right that they served throughout the year. Livy quotes Appius Claudius, a member of the patrician class, telling the assembly the following, Nowhere do we find labor without its reward, nor as a rule, reward without some expenditure of labor. Toil and pleasure, utterly dissimilar by nature, have been brought by nature into a kind of partnership with each other. 
Formerly, the soldier felt it a grievance that he gave his services to the state at his own cost. He had the satisfaction, however, of cultivating his land for a part of the year and acquiring the means of supporting himself and his family, whether he was at home or on service. Now he has the pleasure of knowing that the state is a source of income for him, and he is glad to receive his pay. Let him therefore take it patiently that he is a little longer absent from his home and his property, on which no heavy expense now falls. The patricians accused the tribunes of the people of finding an issue where there was none. Indeed, Appius Claudius argued that the tribunes were fishing for non-issues to remain relevant in the politics of the Republic, or because they hated to see plebeians get along with the patricians. Levy quotes him saying, Is there anyone who doubts that whatever wrongs you may have at any time suffered, they never annoyed and provoked the tribunes so much as the generous treatment of the plebeians by the Senate in establishing the system of pay for the soldiers. What else do you suppose it was that they were afraid of at that time and will today gladly upset except the harmony of the two orders, which they look upon as most of all calculated to destroy their power? They are really, like so many quack doctors looking for work, always anxious to find some disease spot in the Republic, that there may be something which you can call them into cure. Are you tribunes defending or attacking the plebeians? Are you trying to injure the men on service, or are you bleeding their cause? Or perhaps this is what you are saying. Whatever the Senate does, whether it is the interest of the plebeians or against them, we object to. Just as masters forbid strangers to hold any communication with their slaves and think it right that they should abstain from showing them either kindness or unkindness, so you interdict the patricians from all dealings with the plebeians, lest we should appeal to their feelings by our graciousness and generosity and secure their loyalty and obedience. While the popularity of this new way of doing things went a little in the ancient Roman Republic, it remained part of the system of the state. And thousands of years later, paying soldiers a salary is accepted around the world as the best way to maintain a military. If you found this video interesting, take a moment to strike the like button. I also welcome your comment. See you in the next video.